<laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Attorney General Bill Barr has proven to be a loyal defender of the president's actions in the White House. But a recent speech at the Federalist Society is drawing criticism from a group of conservative lawyers who say his view of presidential power is unsupported by history. Joining me now, Paul Rosenzweig, former senior counsel to Ken Starr, and Stuart Green, former advisor to President George H.W. Bush. They are both members of the group Checks and Balances. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. And I want to begin with that letter and quoting from that, you write, in recent months, we have become concerned by the conduct of Attorney General William Barr. Barr rewrote history with the unsupported claim that his view of presidential power was shared by the founders. Barr's view of history, including his claim that the founders shared in any respect his vision of an unchecked president and his assertion that this view was dominant until it came under attack from courts and Congress a few decades ago has no factual basis. So, Paul, let me begin with you. Why do you believe that it has no factual basis? Well, because it doesn't. Uh, the very first Congress conducted oversight investigations of President George Washington. Uh, one of the very first courts uh, ruled that it had authority as a judicial branch to, uh, to oversee the executive and direct it not to follow unconstitutional laws. To say that the uh, assault on presidential authority is a novel thing is wrong. Plus, I mean, just to finish it all off, uh, that's why we fought a revolution against the unchecked authority of an executive branch. And Stuart, we know that the, uh, the Attorney General spoke at the Federalist Society last week to a round of applause from the audience there. And he basically asserted that the president never overstepped his authority. So how was he wrong? Well, he has a categorical view of presidential authority that uh, is frankly incorrect. He describes the unitary executive theory, which I myself uh, have argued in support of a president's war powers. But all that says is that the executive branch is one body and speaks with one voice, that's the president's. There are three co-equal branches, and that's what the framers had in mind. It wasn't just an authoritarian that the, uh, that the framers wanted to ensure against. It was authoritarianism, uh, tyranny. Uh, and by setting up checks and balances, that's exactly what happened. A good example of uh, uh, a judge recognizing that recently uh, is uh, our case in Texas, where the president, uh, irrespective of his powers, attempted to reprogram money that was denied to him by the Congress. That's invading an Article I power. The president seems to think that Article II, and he said so, lets him do anything that he wants. He's wrong, both actually in terms of the structural constitution and historically. And in terms of the impeachment investigation now, I was struck by an angle that the attorney general took in that speech of the Federalist Society, Paul, and I want to get your reaction to this because in the speech, he seemed to allude that those who were trying to uh, go after the president in this impeachment inquiry are denying the right of voters, right? And so we're seeing this from many Republicans, a talking point from Republicans in Congress and from the White House itself, saying that, that they're trying to subvert an election with, with an election year just around the corner. Why go down the path of impeachment? Well, as a political judgment, that might be something that the attorney general could, could advance as a reason for avoiding impeachment. But as a legal judgment, it's just wrong and almost frivolously wrong. The idea that an impeachment cannot happen in an election year is tantamount to saying that impeachment can't happen during a first term in office when a president might again face re-election. Quite to the contrary, the framers actually considered whether or not the, the House should have an impeachment power and the Senate a trial power. And they even considered whether or not that would give the legislature too much power. Uh, and they decided against it precisely because the maintenance of norms of behavior was too important an issue to let only be decided during election times. And no surprise that um, the Justice Department has not responded to requests for comments to your letter. I'm curious as to what finally led you to this point, because many people have been questioning over the past few months the, the, the statements and the actions taken by the attorney general in terms of, of really upholding the power that he thinks lies in the executive office. Well, we're, we're conservatives. Uh, we believe in the Constitution. We believe in the institutions of the country. And we see those being subverted. Uh, and uh, most of us, I think, uh, have, have probably voted Republican in every election we've ever voted in. Uh, but it's important from the conservative side to speak to the values uh, that we think are what makes America great, not again, 
but always has made America great, and uh, that uh, we feel a moral and legal imperative to speak in favor of the rule of law. And why do you think, Paul, that we're not hearing more Republicans, not just on this issue of the attorney general and his actions, but of things we've heard from this White House and, and other members of Congress questioning whether Russia was really uh, interfering in 2016, pointing the finger towards Ukraine as well? Why do you think we are not hearing from more Republicans just in terms of speaking out if they disagree with something, conservative or not? I, I think it has to be putting results over principle. Uh, we have a phrase for it. It's called but Gorsuch, right? Yeah, he's terrible with, in pardoning war criminals, but Gorsuch. Yeah, and I think that kind of describes it. People like the result, and so they're willing to swallow their principles. Does it bother you, gentlemen, both of you, I'll ask you this as we end this, that the president refers to supporters as to whether or not they're never Trumpers or uh, those who support him, that, that he narrows it down to just those labels? Well, uh, I think uh, many of our colleagues have have buttons uh, uh, noting that we're we're legal scum in the in the idea in the in the eyes of the president. Uh, we feel honored by the appellation. Uh, we're we're part of uh, an honorable resistance, and we're speaking for American values, things that we hope are going to last and be restored long after this president is out of office, one way or another. It's an interesting time to be alive, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. John. Thanks to our international viewers for watching. For you, CNN Newsroom with Max Foster is next. For our U.S. viewers, controversy and confusion over the sudden fire.